UFC 293. The card, in my opinion, it's a bit mid, and a lot of you are going to be more excited for the press conference, which will be probably better than a lot of the prelim fights. But we're going to start off with Kevin Juicer against Kiefer Crosby. I'm going with the small underdog, Kiefer Crosby, to win the fight via third round KO, or he's going to win via decision. Kevin Juicer, in my opinion, takes way too much damage. If you're coming forward on your opponent and you're landing leg kicks, don't throw them too close in the pocket. And Kiefer Crosby, he has done a bit of the influencer boxing on the side with the, I don't know what it was called, Kingpin, that's it. And he looked good in that, and that's boxing. But when he comes to MMA, he's still got the fundamentals, like the leg kicks he's got as well. And the boxing is very good as well, because you'll see he moves his head a lot. He's not one of these static boxers. And that is because when you do boxing, you carry the fundamentals of boxing into MMA. But the only thing I have to worry about is how good will his takedown defense be? Because this guy did beat Alex Oliveira on the feet. He actually standing TKO'd him. He's got so much power. But Kevin Juicer, I think he might be a bit intimidated by the power. And because Kiefer Crosby is going to have that high guard, he's going to shoot for takedowns. So it's a hard fight to pick. But I think because of the damage... Kevin Jusic takes constantly against a guy like this with lots of power with his hands and throws with combinations, not one-hand shots. I think he should be able to get a KO or he'll do more damage, therefore winning a decision. Shane Young versus Gabriel Miranda. I'm very surprised about the underdog and I am going with Gabriel Miranda to beat Shane Young via submission between rounds one and rounds two. Don't look back to the last fight in Benoit St. Denis and think he's got no chance because his chin did look a bit suspect. And at that point, Benoit St. Denis, he's not someone with power. So if you've got a guy who barely has power at that point, he does now have more. But at that point, he wasn't finishing anyone on the feet like that and dropping them three times. That was worrying. But against a guy like Shane Young, he's one of those fighters where I'm sorry to say it, but... I don't think he's good enough for the UFC. Not only that, he's a very basic striker. Like, Blake Builder was out striking him. And Blake Builder is a jiu-jitsu guy. And he struggled to get the takedowns. But he's one of those wrestlers, Blake Builder, who... He's not got amazing wrestling. But he's got good jiu-jitsu on the ground. Gabriel Miranda actually has got good wrestling to take you down. Like, he doesn't telegraph it. He'll kind of go for, like, a trip. Or he'll set it up with a punch in a way that is kind of sneaky. And I'm not talking about the Benoit St. Denis fight. If you're looking at the other fights, you'll see what I'm talking about. And I think he's going to be able to get Shane Young down early. And then he'll be on the ground. And I know he's got good submission defense, never been submitted. But Gabriel Miranda's one of those guys where his jiu-jitsu is world class. 15 submissions, only one TKO, and never won by a decision. Shane Young, the only way he's going to win is if he gets to a decision and he somehow is able to stay on the back foot, leg kick him at range and win. But I don't think he's going to be able to do that. And I can just see Gabriel Miranda early trying to shoot for that takedown, getting the body lock, getting him down to the ground, and then Shane Young giving away his back and getting rear naked choked. So I think that's how he wins the fight. Blood Diamond, a.k.a. Mac Mafifa, against Charlie Radke. I'm picking Charlie Radke to win the fight via submission. Blood Diamond, in my opinion, again, one of these fighters where he just should not be in the UFC. Like, I've seen enough of him already. Okay, I gave him the benefit of the doubt in the fight with, what was his name? Jeremiah Wells. He just tripped over, and we know what Jeremiah Wells is like. He looks like he's on roids, jumped on top of him, was able to get him down, rear naked choke. Then you go to the Orion Koske fight. He just can't capitalize on good moments. Like, he hit him with, like, a spinning elbow when he was fatigued. And then he went up to him and tried to hit him, but he just panics and he just makes the wrong decision. Maybe not panics, but just can't pick the right shot selection to finish the opponent. And I'm like, God knows how he made it to a decision with, what was his name? Sharaputin Magomedov, he actually did. So, Charlie Radke, the only thing you have to worry about him is cardio. Because I've noticed he can slow down in the third round. But what he can do, which will cause a problem for Blood Diamond, is shoot for those takedowns in like a Colby style where he'll pick his shots. He won't throw too much, but he won't throw too little. He'll use that right hand to try and set up that takedown, go down low, hold him against the cage. And we might see a similar fight to the Orion Koske where he holds him against the cage, trying to get him down. And Blood Diamond just looks lost. He don't know what to do. 
but Blood Diamond has given away his back on the cage a few times, but not to the point where the opponent has like jumped onto it. I'm not talking about the Jeremiah Wells fight, but the Orion Kosko fight, you'll see him like turn against the cage. And if you do that against a guy like Charlie Radke, I feel like he'll jump onto that back and he'll body triangle him, Aljamain Sterling style, and get a rear naked choke. So I think this will be another fight where he rear naked chokes Blood Diamond because Blood Diamond, again, it's just not that good. His jiu-jitsu defense isn't that good either and he gets taken down quite easily. And his takedown defense is questionable. Nazrat Hakparast versus Alandin Quinones. Easy pick. Nazrat will win this fight by either decision or KO. From what I've seen from Lando Quinones, again, he's not even been on the contender series or anything like that. He doesn't look that good. Although he remains like very calm in fights, he does sometimes become too calm to the point where he gets dropped. And it's happened before because he gets really comfortable in there, lands a few leg kicks, and then when he starts to go backwards, not as good. He's a fighter where he's very good going forward. Well, not very good, but good going forward. But then when you can put him on the back foot, there's problems. And Nazrat Hasparas, he can fight in the center. He can fight going backwards. And the body work that he can land on landing Quinones will slow him down because he might sometimes mix in like a random takedown attempt, but doing it against Nazrat won't work because he's got good grappling. He can defend against the takedowns. And he might even mix up a takedown himself, but I doubt he'll do that. He'll look to stay on the feet. He has power. And because he sometimes drops his hands to land on, he could get KO'd by Nazrat. But I am going to pick Nazrat to win the fight via decision, via pressuring him, hitting him to the body and just mixing up everything with more variation. Michael John, no. Jamie Malarkey versus John Makadesi. I'm going with Jamie Malarkey to win the fight via decision. That last fight was just... What happens when a fighter has a bad chin? He was actually winning the fight and doing everything right, trying to shoot for takedowns. He didn't get that much control time, but he was outstriking him using his reach. And then he just telegraphs a very poor takedown and just gets clipped right in the chin. That is worrying. That's why I'm saying against John Makadesi, he should win. But would I be surprised if out of nowhere John Makadesi head kicks him and knocks him out? No, I wouldn't be surprised, but he probably won't win by KO. But Jamie Malarkey has just got a really bad chin. Had that good win against Michael Johnson, got dropped in that fight. And John Makadesi is on his way out of the sport. Back in the day, he was so much better. But I'm just thinking, why do no fighters shoot for takedowns on him? None of them do. John Makadesi is used to fighting a load of strikers, not a lot of grapplers. And that's where I think Jamie Malarkey could mix that up a lot, especially when he throws the kicks. Shoot in on him when he goes for the kick. Do that. And he could beat him by mixing up the grappling. And I think we'll see a similar performance to his last fight. But he won't end up getting knocked out by doing that poorly telegraphed takedown. So, yeah, I think he's going to beat John Makadesi via decision. Jack Jenkins versus Chepe Mariscal. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going with Jack Jenkins to win the fight via decision. Because Jack Jenkins has a perfect matchup for him. He likes to throw a lot of leg kicks and it sounds a bit cringe. But he has like that Volkanovski style. And obviously he doesn't do it as well as Volkanovski. But he just does it. He can switch the stance. He's good at throwing those heavy leg kicks. His boxing looks good. Very good takedown defense. He can do takedowns on you. And he should have lost that last fight against Jamal Emmers, arguably. But nonetheless, Chepi Marisco, in my opinion, he's all right. But you've got to think about what is Trevor Peak. Trevor Peak is a fighter where there is no technical ability. He is a guy who is a street fighter. And it will work against guys who panic on the back foot. But against Chepi Marisco, he was able to move his head and get under and shoot for takedowns. And it's easy to do that. When your opponent is swinging wildly, not really being defensive in any way, shooting on that takedown is easy. You throw that hook wide and you overswing, you now expose your body and can give away your back. And that happened a lot of times in the fight. But I don't think Jack Jenkins will do something stupid like that. He'll go out there technically, chopping up that leg, making it harder for Chepi Mariscal to shoot. And then when it comes to boxing, Chepi Mariscal, yeah, he had some success at times against Trevor Peak in the striking. But that was because Trevor Peak was tired. Jack Jenkins won't be tired. He can go three rounds. And that's what I think will happen. And he'll win 30-27 easy. Carlos Ulberg versus Dan Young. Carlos Ulberg, he should be 
on the main card. This should have been the opener, but oh well. Featured prelim. Carlos Ulberg is going to win this fight with ease. It's going to be a KO. I don't know whether it will be round one, but I am going to pick round one. Because that and Young, what I've noticed from him, he can struggle against guys who are good at counters. Devin Clark looked to try and get him against the fence and then work the elbows in from there and he had some good success. But Devin Clark looked to work him against the fence and just hold him and look to get the takedown and it was working. And he looks huge. But Carlos Ulberg, very good at going backwards. Like he got a very good check hook on Iho Pretoria when he was coming forward. And Da Ung Young, we've seen him against Dustin Jacoby, who isn't even that big at 205, I don't think. Get counted with a straight right cross. So that makes me think, if you come up against a guy like Carlos Ulberg, his counter striking is very good. He'll either chew up that leg and create an anger where it'll make Da Ung Young flat-footed. Or what might happen is... As that and Young's trying to pressure forward, he might try and grab hold of Carlos Ulberg and try and hold him against the cage and land those elbows because that's something else he does very well. It's elbows. But the only way he'll land the elbows is if he can use the cage as a leverage to get the hand out and then throw the elbow. So he'll have like one underhook in and then use that right hand to come over the top to land the elbow. Carlos Ulberg though has shown, like I just mentioned, Ihor Pretoria. He tried to lunge on him, I believe. He was either trying to get him against the fence. It didn't work. He was able to just catch him with the hook. And I think if he's that good going backwards, that and Young's probably going to get KO'd in this fight. And I don't see it going to a decision. And if it does, he'll just leg kick him away like Adesanya does in five round fights. Tyson Pedro versus Anton Tokalaji. I'm going to pick Tyson Pedro to win the fight via decision. Because... There's a weird thing about him. He loses to, to guys with loads of experience, but then beats guys who he shouldn't beat. For example, how has he beaten Khalil Roundtree and Paul Craig? Two ranked guys, but then loses to Ilya Latifi out of prime. He didn't really have a prime, but Ovin Sempru out of prime, Maurizio Roya out of prime, and the Modestus Bukowskis. Okay, fair enough. That was a good win by Modestus, but... He's very inconsistent, but I think Anton Tekelaji is a perfect fight made for him. A very hittable guy who hasn't got good defence, leaves his chin up open in the air. All he wants to do really is hold on to you and look to take you down and look to submit you. And he won't be able to just take down Tyson Pedro and submit him. Because Tyson Pedro has got jiu-jitsu. I know you're going to be like, where was it in the Ovens in Peru fight? But to be fair with you, Ovin St. Peru looks huge compared to Tyson Pedro. Anton Tikalegi won't like dwarf him in size. He won't. It just won't happen. So I think it's a fight where he might even drop Tikalegi because if you leave your chin open in the air trying to exchange punches against a guy full of power like Vitor Petrinio and you're eating all of the punches, you might get dropped, especially by this guy, because that chin cannot last forever. The amount of damage he absorbed to the chin in that fight was ridiculous. And it was weird because Vita Petrinio started fighting like a grappler. He does that now when he's meant to be some power puncher striker, but it just doesn't happen anymore. And I think Tyson Pedro is going to outland him and he's going to hit him with the hardest shot. So what Tikalaji needs to do is wait for him to explode. And then when he goes to explode from the hip with a hook, shoot low to get the takedown. But even if he does, I think Tyson Pedro should be good enough on the ground to deal with it. Like when he had... Paul Craig of all people on the ground. He weren't able to get up. He was able to crucifix him and hit him with those elbows from that position. Like he has got a good ground game, but I think he's not going to look to take any risk and he's going to try and knock him out on the feet. Austin Lane against Justin Taffer. We all saw what happened in the last fight. The eye poke ruined that fight completely. It was over. But I think, like my old prediction, I am picking Justin, what's his name? Justin Taffer to win the fight via KO. Earlier on, Austin Lane did have a good start attacking the body, but it only lasted about 15 seconds, so I don't want to go into too much detail over that. But again, he has struggled against guys with serious power. Like Greg Hardy was able to clip him on the Contender Series. And then you've had other guys in other promotions. You won't know who he is, but Frank T. KOs him in the first round. Vernon Lewis KOs him in the first round. He's a guy where I'm a bit worried about that chin. If you've been knocked out three times already, I know he's got a lot of KOs, but... A guy who likes to throw a lot of kicks against a guy like Justin Taffer, who likes to load up with his punch, 
it's going to land eventually on a guy like that because when you're throwing those kicks and you're on one leg, Taffa's good at timing that overhand and it will land onto the chin. Like, look what he did to Parker Porter. Put him down straight away with that overhand. And I think he can do the same thing against Austin Lane. So he's got that kind of, like, no technical side to Justin Taffer, by the way, but he's just got that Tai Tuivasa build, brawling style, but not with leg kicks. And that's how I think he wants to fight. Just swinging haymakers and catches him on the chin and knocks him out cold. But there is a chance Austin Lane could do it to a decision by jabbing, going the Adesanya right, fighting on the back foot. I don't think it's going to happen, but there is a chance considering he's lost to Jared Vandera before, Justin Taffer. Manel Cap versus Felipe Dos Anjos. Lock of the card. Manel Cap will end up winning the fight, in my opinion, via decision. I'm going to pick him to do it by, but it'll be a dominant decision. Felipe Dos Anjos... I feel kind of bad for him. Like He's been given a high-ranked opponent way too early into his debut. And again, a Charles Oliveira tube box type of style. But obviously nowhere near as good as Charles Oliveira. Marching you down forward, looking to use those push kicks, using the head kicks, and then when he gets you against the fence, unloading with combinations, looking to use that elbow against the cage. And that is his stuff. And that is his style. But the only difference between him and Daniel Santos in terms of damage is he doesn't really get hurt really bad. Like, he doesn't have a moment where he gets dropped and has to make a comeback. Never happens. And he looks like he's very tight with his defense. And on the ground, he has got jiu-jitsu as well that he could use. But I think Manel Cap's way too much for him. He's built up all that experience. And each fight, he looks like he's getting better. Like, look at the names Manel Cap's already beaten. Especially the improvements with his ground game, his counter-striking, his shot selection. Like when he landed that knee on Ode Osborne, that was impressive. Because I don't think he was doing that well when he started off the round. And then he came back and he won. Late first round. And Mateus Nicolau, you could argue again, he won that fight. And you could argue the only UFC fight he actually lost was the Alexander Pantoja fight, which was fair and he is now the champion. So yeah, Philip de Santos, I think unfortunately it's going to be a decision loss where he just gets outclassed in every position on the ground. Uh, Tai Tuivasa versus Alexander Volkov. You're not going to like it. I'm picking Tai Tuivasa to win. I know Tai Tuivasa when it's the last fight. He just could not deal with the range of Pavlovich. And Volkov offers the same threat as Pavlovich. Very good with the range. Very technical. He's quite big. He's not like a really scrawny six foot seven guy. He's kind of muscly. Or you want to call him Jack to whatever. But what I think Tai Tuivasa does, round one, he comes into the pocket. And do you know what his style is? Not technical whatsoever. I don't even think we're going to see Tai Tuivasa throw any leg kicks. Because you throw a leg kick at range, Volkov's got that reach where he can catch you immediately. And I don't think we're going to see a Jairzinho Rosen strike thing where he immediately gets backed up and put against the cage. I think just like the Derek Lewis fight where... He just should not win the fight, but he ends up winning it. Tai Tuivasa is going to be able to weather the early storm of Volkov, but I don't think he's going to immediately, like I've mentioned before, go for the knockout. Because you've got to remember, I know Pavlovich did it in the first round, but Pavlovich has got the shortest finish time, almost at heavyweight. He probably has got the shortest time. And Volkov, he's more of a guy where he'll take his time. He won't always go for that early finish. And against Romanov, again... I'm surprised he didn't even lose a point because he was going to get him down and he grabbed onto the cage. So I think, I know that's irrelevant now, but Tai Tuivasa, round one, immediately he's going to go for that knockout. And I think he's going to find the chin. He found, the, he found it on guard and dropped him, wasn't able to completely capitalize on it. But I think with Volkov, if you can knock him down, remember how big he is. All that weight crashing down to the ground, he's going to struggle to get up off the ground immediately. And yes, I know he's one of the most technical strikers in the heavyweight division, for example. If he really wanted to, he could start chopping away at the body like he did to Walt Harris. And we know what Tai Tuivasa was like against Garn. If you can attack that body, you can slow him down. But I think Tai Tuivasa knows the longer this fight goes, he ain't got a chance. If it goes past the minute in the second round, fight over for me. Volkov will win. But I think Tai Tuivasa is going to approach this fight very fast and try and put Volkov on the back foot looking to land that overhand and Australia is going to have the crowd on his side and I know that sounds ridiculous but I just see 
Tied to Ivasa, closing that distance and knocking him out, just like Derek Lewis did, even though it shouldn't happen on paper. Right, Israel Adesanya against Sean Strickland. The most obvious pick I've seen in a long time. Lock, guaranteed, Israel Adesanya. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know if he's going to look to leg kick him away to a decision like he did against Jared Kananir, or if he's going to go for the knockout. Probably a decision, but there is no way Sean Strickland wins the fight. He'll tell you himself probably after the fight. He knew he weren't going to beat Adesanya. Like with the Kamara Usman fight, he knew for a fact he was never going to win that fight and he didn't win it. But the reason I think he won't win it is because it's Sean Strickland. He doesn't fight smart sometimes. You know what he's like. He will walk you down when he shouldn't. Why would he walk down Alex Pereira? One of the hardest hitting guys in the division, glory kickboxing champion, wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. I know he trains with him, I believe, now. But that won't be enough. And... Sean Strickland, you might say, oh, what about the jiu-jitsu and submission game of him? That will be irrelevant because he will not get Israel Adesanya down to the ground and be able to control him. Look at Whitaker. He got Adesanya down, but Adesanya was able to get up at times. And you'll say, Robert Whitaker's more of a defensive grappler, but never against Adesanya. He's more offensive. But Sean Strickland doesn't have that threat like Adriscus the Plessy, where he's huge. He can just lie down on you. And control you like that. Driscus de Plessy is the only guy right now who I think, and Alex Pereira, who pose a huge threat to Adesanya. Sean Strickland just don't, because he won't be able to get it down to the ground to the point where he can advance position and try and take his neck. But one thing you might say why Sean Strickland could do it is because if you look at the fight with, who was it? Robert Whittaker and Vittori, I believe he did give away his back a few times in that fight. And if you give away your back to Sean Strickland, he should be able to lock in a rear naked choke. But I think he will know against Sean Strickland not to do that. Because, one, against Robert Whittaker, he has not got jiu-jitsu. He knows if you give away the back, he ain't going to submit you. Marvin Vittori, that on the other hand, again, he's a guy where you don't want to give away your back. But he did and he was able to survive. But I don't think he's got better jiu-jitsu than Marvin Vittori. I just don't. And Marvin Vittori likes to wrestle a lot now compared to just going for jiu-jitsu. Or if anything, he likes to strike more than take people down. But I think Sean Strickland, in my opinion, has zero chance. The only main event this year where I'm like almost 100% confident, Adesanya wins. And I don't think the guy I know will be there. And if it is, then it will be a KO. But no chance for Sean Strickland. He wants to make money. He's told you this before. You don't care about no belt or anything. He just wants to get paid. If he beats Adesanya... Well, it'd be funny and he would like the money, but he doesn't care if he loses because he's getting paid a lot and he's made a lot this year, I believe, fighting Nasser Adina Matov and he's going to get paid a lot to fight Adesanya now. And a lot of you are going to be interested in the press conference, which is going to be really early here, but really late for people in America. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.